The next speaker is uh, Jon uh, Svensson. He's coming from Sweden, ABB. He will talk about ABB's HDVC and, as we see, light technology and applications. Thank you very much. So, uh, good morning, everyone. So, my name is Jon Svensson, working for ABB Corporate Research. And today I will talk about ABB's HVDC and SVC Lite concept, go into the different technologies and, and applications. First, a bit about myself. <laughs> uh, I've been working at Chalmers, first as a, as a PhD student in power electronics, and then I continued as an assistant professor, working more on power electronics with grid applications. And in the end, I got the title docent uh, equal to Doctor of Science uh, in power electronics. And then I chose to go over to ABB. So I started working for ABB uh, HVDC, developing uh, the HVDC Lite concept. And then after five years, I switched DC to AC, started working for facts, uh, developing statcoms and energy storage. And then I switched over to um, ABB Corporate Research, uh, where I've been a, a program manager for a research program looking into active, active devices in, in, in a power system, mainly power electronics. And now I'm working as a senior principal scientist. And if you want to contact me, you can see my email and my telephone number. Okay, some facts about ABB. So we say that we are a global leader in, in power and automation technologies. And we are <clears throat> around 150,000 employees in, in, I think, more than 100 countries. We are a, a, a true global company. Uh, and ABB was, uh, was f founded by merging two old companies. One was a Swiss BBC company, and the other one was a Swedish ASEA company. And now the main office is in, in Switzerland. And even if then ABB is a quite old uh, company, we are still really good in innovations. So Thomson and Reuters recognized ABB as one of uh, the top global in innovators. A little bit more about ABB. So ABB is divided into five uh, divisions. So we have power product division, and here we produce transformer, capacitors, uh, breakers, and so on. And then we have another division called power system. And here we make tailor-made systems for the customers when it comes to facts, HVDC substation, power generation, SCADA systems. And then the third division is discrete automation and, and, and motion. And here we, we produce r robots, drive system, power electronics for industry, uh, electrical machines, and so on. And the fourth division is uh, low voltage products. And here it's more uh, mass products for, for domestic and industry use. And the last division is about uh, process automation. And in, in this division they are making, we could say, control system for big uh, paper mills, steel, steel mills, uh, marines, and, and industry and so on. So this is a bit about ABB. Now you know everything. So let's now switch over to, uh, to facts, ABB facts, and, and then I will talk about the SVC Lite. And FACT stand, stands for Flexible AC Transmission System, and it, it's a group of devices that uh, improve the performance of the power system, and often we are using uh, power electronics. And you have seen this equation, this fundamental equation. So with fax devices, we could, uh, as we have seen with, with, uh, with the presentation before me, we, we could uh, change the impedance of, of a line between two areas and then change the power. And uh, we could also change the, the voltage uh, in, in, in nodes and, and by, by then change the power power flow, and we could change the, uh, the phase angle between uh, the two areas with other devices and then change the, the power. So utilizing this, we can damp oscillations in, in, in the power system. Uh, 
and we can control the, the line power closer to the thermal limits and we could prevent voltage collapses and we could have a voltage control and we could increase the power quality. And one popular way to say what are we doing with, with facts. So if we look at the right figure, so we, if we look at the, the, the capacity of a line, then, sorry, then in the top here we have the thermal limit, that is the highest one. But we always have the stability limit below here. So by introducing facts we could push up the, the, uh, the stability limit closer to the thermal limit and by that we could uh, get more power through the line. And, and one way to see that is that we could have more beer in, in, the, in the glass. <laughs> so less foam. So looking a bit into ABB facts, uh, what pr products are we selling? Well, we have shunt compensation. So it started with, with a static VAR compensator that we introduced in uh, 1975. So it's, it's a quite mature product. And then in 1997, we introduced our statcom called SVC Lite, and I will talk more about it later on here. And then we, we also have series compensation and the, the fixed series compensation, and that is a really old product. It, it was introduced in 1950. And then in 1997, we introduced the controlled uh, series compensation. And then in uh, 2010, uh, we also introduced uh, what we call the dynamic energy storage. And the name of that one is DynaPeak. So we have both some, some new and, and old products in our product portfolio. And, and so far, when it comes to ABB facts, we have installed more than 800 uh, installations uh, around the world. But we have some white spots uh, in some, some countries around the world still. So I talk about the STATCOM. Uh, why is it so good with the STATCOM compared to the more classic static VAR compensator? So if we look at the, the left figure here, so this is a shunt compensation, and what we want to do is to inject or consume reactive power uh, in the point U here in order to, to increase or decrease the voltage level. And by using uh, the static VAR compensators, we could say that we are changing the values of the capacitance and the in, in, inductance using thyristors. Um, the drawback here, if, if, if you have a voltage going down, if U goes down, uh, then it's difficult to keep up the, the current we want to inject in order to rise the, uh, the voltage. So, so the, the reactive power we could inject is then uh, depends on, on the voltage in square. Uh, and also, if we are using thyristors, we have uh, low-frequency harmonics that we have to take away with uh, passive filters. And, and this is a bit tricky if a, if a grid configuration changes. If we look to the right, we could see the, the STATCOM in, in, instead. And the STATCOM is a voltage source converter, which is connected to, to the grid. And we have a, a reactor in each phase between the, the converter and the grid. And here with the VEC, we are producing our own voltage. So even if uh, the voltage on the grid side, U, goes down, we could st still keep the, the compensation current to, to the nominal value, what we want to have. Therefore, the reactive power will be line linearly to, to, to the grid voltage. And when we are using voltage source converters with transistor, we could switch quite fast, so we have a higher bandwidth. And with this ba bandwidth, we could do more things like active filtering. And if we have a load where we have a lot of uh, reactor power changes, uh, and we will get flicker problems, we could mitigate this flicker by, by have a high bandwidth with the reactive power we are uh, injecting to the grid. And we have less low frequency harmonics, so we need less uh, passive filters, which is really good. And the STATCOM uh, we have uh, is a free level uh, neutral point clamping converter, and you can see here to, to the left. Um, 
and, and we could connect it to a 35 kilovolt bus without a transformer and, and, and therefore to, to handle this, the voltage then each valve uh, in, in, in the converter, as you could see here, then consists of a number of serious connected IGBTs. So here you have a picture of, of a valve hole. So, uh, so here you could see serious connected IGBTs that then will form one, one valve here. And we have a quite high switching frequency. Uh, so it will be a short response time and so on. Uh, and the power rating of, the, of, of this uh, goes up to around 100 MVA. And uh, we have used it both for transmission application and also for industry application. Now we have introduced a, a new generation of SVC light. Uh, we introduced it in, in, the, in, in the SIGRI conference in August this year in, in Paris. And this is a, a chain link converter which is delta connected. And, and chain link converter consists of a number of converter cells that, that we connect in series in each phase. Uh, and the good thing here is that uh, it's a multi-level converter. So if we have a number of these converter cells, as we could see here, here we have around 25, then the output voltage will, will be really sinusoidal. So we could get rid of all these passive filters, big passive filters. And down here in the middle, you could see one, uh, one module, how it really looks like. And in one module, we have four series connected uh, converter cells. And these modules, we are then putting into a house, as you could see here. And in this house, we also have a room for the control system and, and, uh, and, one, uh, and one room for, for the uh, cooling system. And we are building a house if, we are, if, if, uh, if the converter is for a high voltage and high power for a transmission application. And for transmission application, we also have a transformer, a step-up transformer, as we could see here, down to the right here in the picture. If we are doing it for more for a lower voltage, uh, lower power for an industry application, then instead of a house, we could uh, use containers. So we mount everything in the factory and then send it out to the site. And to compare a little bit about uh, the, the two generations here, um, the big difference you could see here is uh, the converter voltage. So that with the new one, we can have it directly connect up to 69 kilovolt without a transformer. And the power range per, per block here is we could go up to 360 megawatt compared to the, to the old one, which was around 100. Okay, depending a bit about the application. And also when it comes to the IGBT here, you can see that we are use, utilizing a higher voltage level. Before it was a 2.5 kilovolt, and now it's 4.5 kilovolt. Okay, and then we could look a bit into the applications, SEC light applications. The um, fundamental applications are, well, of course, reactive power compensation, and then load balancing, and we could also uh, reduce harmonics. And to the left here, we could see we could use as we see light in, in a transmission grid. And then we are utilizing it for voltage stabilization. And uh, we could uh, facilitate uh, vo uh, voltage right through and have a, a voltage recovery. And we could use as we see light for utility scale uh, renewables integration to fulfill the, the grid code. And we have used as we see light for uh, rail power supply and that is for, to take away uh, low, low frequency harmonics and, and load balancing and then use as we slide for industry application to, uh, to increase the power quality and one really demanding application is to, to reduce flicker that is created from electrical arc furnace so that was AC now let's switch over to DC and uh, H HVDC. As we have heard before, uh, if you go to uh, the history of HVDC, so they break through for HVDC where in 1954, uh, 
when, when we built a line uh, between the mainland of Sweden to the island Gotland, and the power rating here was 20, 20 megawatts, 100 kilovolts cable, and we were using mercury arc valves. It was first in the 70s that we intru introduced the thyristors. And then in 97, uh, uh, we introduced the, the, the self commutated converters using IDBTs. And how does it work then with, with, uh, with uh, HVDC using voltage source converters? So you can see top right here that for an HVDC we need a rectifier and an inverter, and then we need a cables or overhead lines, DC connecting the two converter stations, and then as an inter interface to, to the AC grid we have a transformer to adapt the uh, voltage level and to get an insulation. And, uh, Originally, with the HVDC light concept, we were only using uh, uh, cables with plastic in ins insulation. Uh, so we are using cross-linked polyethylene insulation material. And the good thing with this kind of cables is that they are very light. So you could see here a picture where we are plowing down the cable in into the ground. And the cables do, does not contain uh, oil, so we'd say it's an environmental friendly system. And it will be, of course, a minimum right of way due to its un underground cables. And the good thing with voltage source converters is that we could control the active and the reactive power independently of each other. So in the same time as we are transferring power through the HVDC, uh, the HVDC link, we could also have reactive power compensation on both ends to support the AC grid. And when it comes to this product now, it started as a research project in 1994. And then the first R&D demonstrator was in close to Ludvika in, in Sweden. It was three megawatt. Uh, and then the first pilot installation was on Got the island Gotland in Baltic Sea. It was 50 megawatt. And down left, you could see a picture of uh, the building of one converter station, how it looked like. So it started with three megawatt. We went up to 50 megawatt, but, but the customers, they always wanted more power all the time. Uh, and they also thought that we had too much losses in the system. So we have worked a lot with R&D in order to, to take down the losses and to be able to increase the voltage and the power so you could see here with the first generation of uh, HVDC light we had then, we had a quite high losses per converter station. And in the beginning we were using a two-level converter. In order to take down the losses and to increase the power ratings, we went over to a three-level active NPC converter. And here we are using series connected IDBTs to handle the high voltage levels. But that converter becomes quite expensive and, and uh, since we, within ABB, we have our own semiconductor manufacturing, they developed a new uh, IDBT for us that, that made it possible to then switch back to a two-level converter again, and we could increase the voltage level, increase the power rating, and we could take down the losses. And now we are up in generation four here, and, and now we are working with the multi-level converter structure. And now we are almost down uh, uh, where with the losses level where we have for, for the line commutated converters using thyristors. Uh, and we are working a lot now with R&D to f look into the next generation of HVDC light to even make it even better. These two uh, pictures are quite nice. If you look at the left one, you could see the development of power rating for what we call classic HVDC using uh, thyristors. So in, in the 70s, you could see the power rating was not high. And then we have been able to increase the voltage level and also to increase the current level. So now we are up here today with around, we could transmit six gigawatts of power with a, a voltage rating of plus minus 800 kilovolts. And, and now we are working with the, with the next uh, generation, and that will be 1,100 kilovolts 
uh, HVDC, and then we could transmit 10 gigawatts of power. So it's a, it's a quite amazing uh, development here. And the same thing for HVDC light. I said it started here with three megawatts, and now we are up to uh, one gigawatt approximately. So we have been able to increase the current and to increase the voltage level. And the customers, they want more power and lower losses. And of course, they want the cost to be less also. So that, is, that, that are the challenges for us. So we are working a lot with power electronics and also power semiconductors and cables to, to, to manage this. And now when it comes to the cables here, uh, we have right now, okay, in August, in the SIGRI conference, we have introduced the new cable here that managed 525 kilovolts, both for subsea and underground application. And by using these cables, then we could transmit 2.6 gigawatts underground. And that is the, the power consumption of the whole Paris and these cables, they are really small. You could look, look at them, and they are big like this something. So two of these cables, that is the power for a whole Paris. So for me, I, I think it's amazing <laughs> that we could actually transmit so much power in, in so little uh, area. And if we look at the applications, the normal application is point to point. And we have sold a lot of projects on this. Here is one, one project that we are connecting Finland with Estonia uh, with the power line of uh, 350 megawatts. Another application is embedded point-to-point -point transmission. And one application here is uh, the first HVDC light uh, on, on Gotland here, as we have heard before. We have, we have had another project on electrification of offshore platforms. So we're taking power from the mainland in Norway and then transmit it uh, through the HVDC line, uh, at HVDC light lines, out to, to, to the North Sea, to these platforms here. Another application is a uh, high power drive system. Uh, and I would say this is the world's longest drive system. It's 70 kilometers long. So we have a rectifier on the mainland of, uh, in Norway, and, and then the, the inverter and, and, the, and the machine, synchronous machine, is out on, on an oil gas platform called Troll uh, to, to be able to, to feed a compressor so we could pump up the gas in, in, in a better way. And then re now recently we have had a number of uh, offshore wind farm connections. And here now we are up. Uh, the last one, the Dolbin Beta, is up to 900 megawatts. And I would like to mention a little bit now, uh, uh, finally here, about DC grids. There will be more presentation about DC grids today. Uh, I believe, or ABB believe, that we see a number of uh, offshore wind, wind connections now in, uh, in, in the North, North Sea. So I, I believe that we will go from point to point to multi-terminal grids and then to regional grids and then like a vision to, to the, uh, more to the inter-regional HVDC grids. And when we talk about inter-regional HVDC grids, we talk about uh, meshed grids. And we should also be able to handle faults. If we have a fault, then the total grid should not collapse. So we need uh, uh, protection zones so we could disconnect the line which doesn't work. And in order to, to obtain these interregional HVDC grids, we need uh, DC breakers, we need cables for high voltages, we need automatic uh, network restoration, we need power flow control in order to control the power in each line if we have a mesh system. And we need uh, high voltage DC DC converters. And uh, we have worked a lot on DC breakers. You have seen we, uh, we have uh, high voltage cables now. Uh, we are really good in uh, automatic network restoration. What is a bit more futuristic that we have not worked so much yet is with uh, the power flow control and, and high voltage DC DC converters. 
and building a, a grid covering the whole Europe, of course, it's also important to have global rules and regulations for operation. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, I think this is the last slide. Uh, so, in order to, to obtain this uh, DC grid, uh, we have worked a lot on uh, uh, a breaker. So, we have come up here with, with a, a DC breaker. Uh, sorry. Where we have a fast breaking time, five milliseconds, and we have a very low on state losses. And to obtain that, we have two paths here. We have one path with, with a very fast mechanical switch. And then we have an, a, a, a valve, uh, valve switch here. So in normal operation, the current will go through here. And when we want to uh, activate the switch, we shift the current. Instead of going through the mechanical switch, we let the current going through the, uh, the semiconductors here. And that, therefore, it's very easy to, to open up this uh, breaker or switch. And then we, we, we turn off the IDB it is connecting here. And then we break the current. And down to the left, you could see uh, how it could look like what we add a small building here to an HVDC station that then contains the, uh, the, the, uh, the DC breaker. And we are using uh, half bridge uh, converter cells. So if we have a fault on the DC side, uh, we need to disconnect. Uh, but if we are using a, a DC breaker on the DC side, then we con con can continue the operation and have reactive power compensation even if the, the DC, the, the DC uh, cable free or overhead lines uh, have, have a short circuit or have a ground fault. And also this DC breaker is important if we have a, a bigger uh, DC grid and we have a fault in one of the lines, then we want to disconnect it. So then we need uh, the, uh, the DC breaker to take out that faulty line. Okay, that's it. Questions? Thank you very much. So we have there a question. So I have uh, two very uh, simple questions. Uh, yes. <laughs> the first one is, uh, it seems that um, the evolution of, of uh, BSC, it's faster and faster with increasing voltages and, and uh, power. Yes. One gigawatt. So which is your expectation of uh, regarding the death of uh, HBDC conventional classic, uh, taking into account the, the, the the speed of BSC and the capabilities and uh, all the facilities that uh, allows BSC with regard to LCC. So the lifetime of uh, Theristor and application with, with uh, high voltage direct current, mm -hmm. you, f you think that it's, it uh, makes sense to project future installations with LCC? This is the first one. Yes. When we introduced HVDC light, the name light is that it's smaller than the original uh, line commutated converter, what we call uh, uh, the classic HVDC. But we have seen that the power rating goes up very quickly, really quickly from 3 megawatt now up to 2.6 uh, gigawatt. And this is with a cable. We could also use overhead lines and then we could go up even higher in, in power rating. But we also see a development for the classic HVDC that now we are up in 10 gigawatt. And one, of, one interesting question is how, how much power could we transmit with one line or with one bipole? Now we talk about 10 gigawatt. How many uh, uh, power systems could handle 10 gigawatt if we have a trip so it disappears? If we have this N minus one criteria, then it's mainly China, India, and uh, perhaps South America that could handle it. I think in Europe we have this N minus one criteria. It's we could handle one gigawatt if one gigawatt disappears. So I think in uh, in Europe we will not see these 10 gigawatt transmission lines. 
So I think in, in, the, in, the, in these big areas uh, where we have a big need of trans transmit a lot of power for very long distance, then the classic HVDC with resistors is a good solution. But otherwise, I think it will be uh, the, uh, the voltage source converter HVDC that, that will be uh, um, the only technology, I would say. <coughs> And we start already now to see, uh, I've talked a lot now about point-to-point -point connections, but we see uh, a number of customers that want uh, free terminal systems. So, so we, we start to see these uh, visionary DC grids that at least we start to see uh, free, free terminal systems coming up now. And in China they have installed a five terminal uh, HVDC system using voltage source converters. More questions? So there is a very, uh, the second one. Yes. Which is uh, on, the, on the other uh, sense, with low voltage direct current. Uh, do you think that it makes sense to have uh, a DC network at home, taking into account a lot of charges and so on? Yes, I mean, if you go to the real low voltage in offices, all our PCs, everything is DC. We're using DC, and then we have a lot of adapters. Why not use DC directly? So I, I believe uh, that we will see more DC in the future. But it depends also on the development of, a, of uh, power, power electronics, because in the end it's a cost issue, cost and performance issue, how, mu how much the customer is, is, uh, can pay for a certain uh, functionality and how good the functionality is. There was another question here uh, a bit back. Um, static uh, compensation even if the line is folded and disconnected um, uh, how does that ex actually work the continuous uh, reactive power compensation even if the line is uh, disconnected of course if if you remove the line completely it's, it's difficult to have reactive power compensation that makes sense <laughs> Okay, but in, the, in one of the last slides you said that if you have the DC breaker and you... Okay, 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 now, now, now I follow you, I follow you. So it was uh, yeah. this slide, yes. Uh, so if, if we have an ordinary voltage source converter, uh, then that one consists of uh, face legs with, with IDBTs, and each IDBT has an anti-parallel diode. And if we have a fault on the DC side of the converter, and the converter is connected to, to an AC grid, then we will have a short circuit current going through the diodes. So it will be a short circuit uh, six pulse uh, diode rectifier. Uh, but then if we are using a, a DC breaker, to, to break up this uh, DC fault, then, uh, then we could have reactive power compensation to the AC side, because we don't have the, the, the short circuit on the, on the DC side. So this is one way to do it. And this is a quite nice, cheap solution. Another solution is instead of using half-bridge converter cells, you are using full-bridge converter cells. And then, and then you could control the DC voltage. So by that concept, you can go, go down with the DC voltage to zero, and then you will not have any short circuit current going into the DC line, where we have a, a short circuit. But that concept is a bit cost more compared to this solution here. I will be around for the full day, so if you have more questions, uh, please. Come and talk to me afterwards. Yeah. Thank you very much.